hopefully it's a, a case of third time lucky for us. We, um, we've been disappointing the last two grand finals. So we're making sure that we're ticking all the boxes and just go for it. We run out of legs a little bit in the last game against them, so we really need to need to focus on executing a game plan. And they'll throw everything out there to make sure that they get the ball. The thing that the Swifts bring to the court is that speed of the ball movement in their attack lineup. And of course you've got, you know, those crazy girls down the other end in Shani Layton and Julie Corletto. We had Greta last year with the Swift, so we're really going to have to try and keep her quiet and yeah, try and get the ball before it gets to Ramelda. It'll just be a, a wonderful, wonderful 60-minute game of netball. We've been in this position for the past two years, but we plan on a very different outcome this week. For the second time in five days, the Queensland-New South Wales sporting rivalry will reach fever pitch. The Maroons couldn't get the job done in origin, so it's over to the Firebirds to carry the weight of their state. They've been grand finalists in the last two years, only to finish the bridesmaid. Will it be third time lucky today? The Swifts have arrived here the long way. They're tired, they're sore, but they have the fight needed to see out the last 60 minutes of the season. It's the two best teams in the competition. Netball has well and truly delivered. And by the end of the day, one of these teams will hold the championship trophy aloft for the second time in the competition history. Hello and welcome to the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. Great to be with you, Kelly Underwood, alongside the former Australian captain, Liz Ellis. And Liz, it is the grand final that we'd hoped for. It is, Kel. There's been a lot of talk this year about the new conference system, the revamped finals. Would they give us what we needed, which is the two best teams in the competition in the final match? And it has delivered. Firebirds and Swifts have by far played the best netball we've seen this year. And we have a feast of netball today. So they've played three times this year. And every game's been uh, full of drama. The first one was a draw in Sydney. And then a couple of weeks later in Geitz, uh, milestone 100th game. They got the job done by four goals. And this is just two weeks ago on this court. It was brutal. It was very brutal. And the Firebirds really came out angry in that game. Gretel Tippett led with the shoulder on a few times. Laura Geitz went in hard against Caitlin Thwaites. But the Swifts gave it back. And both teams will be looking to do that today. It will be uh, really interesting to see how both teams start. That physicality is a trademark of them. So the Firebirds haven't lost since round one. That's 112 days to go. I've had the calculator out. And this is why. Because of this starting seven. It is, and it's a phenomenal record, and they come into this game with an incredibly settled line, and there are stars all the way down the court. The midcourt was where the Firebirds experimented earlier in the year, especially across that wing attack, goal attack line. It is Nevins and Tippett who have the start. They've cemented their spot through the course of the season. It's their job to be the link to Aitken. Guys with Meneman in defence. Beck Bully may come on in that defensive line. She has been the super sub for the Firebirds. Now, you said at the start of the season that Gretel, Gretel Tippett may well be the missing piece in this premiership puzzle and you may be right but uh, she's brought a new skill set to the game of netball this year she's got the netball world talking and will play in her first grand final today she will she's got that basketball background when she first started to get some court time with the Firebirds at the start of the year she really struggled to get the balance right between the netball skills and the basketball skills she's fine-tuned that over the course of the season and we see a far more mature athlete now the real key for the Firebirds though is to get her and Ramelda Aiken to keep possession between them they average about 11 turnovers a game so they will cough up possession what doesn't get talked about though is just how good they are defensively and it's the defensive work of Romelda Aiken and Gretel Tippett on that transition play when they lose possession that sees the Firebirds really start to build that pressure that is where the Swifts are going to struggle. Okay the Swifts have lost three games for the entire year twice to the Firebirds once to the Thunderbirds all the interest in this starting seven and you can see it right there is the captain at Will Star. There has been so much talk about Kim Green's lower leg she's got a calf injury but she will We'll get the start today. The question now is how long she will play. The Swifts need her on court for the full 60 minutes. Abby McCulloch gets a start at wing defence. That back line of Leighton and Corletto hasn't changed all year and the pressure is on the front line of Pettit and Plates to deliver the kind of sterling netball they have. The top name on the reserves list, Jade Clark, the English captain. What a sub she is for the Swifts. We will see her come into the game at some point today. You would think that the Swifts cannot win this today if Caitlin Plates is contained. She's gone head-to-head -head with Laura Guides three times this year and has been beaten. Flights averaging just 21 in the three games against Guides. 
Yeah, and she was beaten in the last game, but I thought she had a really good first quarter. Seven from ten in the first quarter in the conference final. Faded out to shoot just four goals in the second quarter. She does have a thing mentally about Laura Geitz, but for Thwaites, she needs to come on with game pace, and she needs to take the game physically to Geitz and not let her have it all in her own way. So for Thwaites today, she averages 30 goals against everyone else in the competition, but 21, as you say, against Laura Geitz. The pressure is on her. If she plays well, the Swifts are a real chance. Well, helping us uh, dissect and analyse this season despite it this afternoon. In the Firebirds camp, we've got Sarah Allen. And in the Swifts camp, a Premiership star from last year with the Vixens. And, of course, the Premiership winning captain for the Swifts all the way back in 2008, Catherine Cox. Well, with the, with the Swifts, we know it's been six games in five cities in five days. For Rob Wright, it's been about management this week. He wants to make sure his players are as fresh as possible. For them, that's meant just the one training session on court this week. Netball fans and Swifts fans will be stoked to see that Kim Green, their captain, is starting the game tonight, but we will keep a close eye on her. Meanwhile, Cal, it's been completely different in the Firebirds camp. They've had the perfect lead-up. They've played the last three games in Brisbane, and they have no injury concerns. A win today. Could it be the perfect end to Laura Geitz's career as a Firebird? The 27-year-old hasn't made a decision about her playing future. She said she'll weigh up her options after today's grand final, but very high on the to-do list is to win a second one of these ANZ Championship titles. We'll see how she goes today. And it's a fascinating subplot to this afternoon's game. Stick with us because the season decider is just moments away. We'll be back with the opening centre pass right after this. It's a game and someone has to win and someone has to lose. You're out there to, to do your state proud. We went out and had a really great start against them, so we're just going to have to stick to our game plan. You have to go out there and take it, and it's something that we know we have to go out and earn, and, and it's something that you know we have to really work for. They're physical, they're fast. Keeping our ball movement working really fast, I think that's going to be um, the key for us. I don't think the fans could get anything better than that matchup between two Australian sides. Welcome back to the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. This match sold out in less than half a day. A crowd of 6,500 fans filing through and the stadium is buzzing with energy as we count down to the opening centre pass, the 2015 ANZ Championship Grand Final. Let's get down to the court MC for the official introductions. Here's Pete Laser. The umpires for today's game are Sharon Kelly and John O'Breeden. The reserve umpire is Rachel Eyre. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to call on the court the two teams taking part in today's grand final. Taking the court for the New South Wales Swifts and goal shooter, Caitlin Thwaites. At goal attack, Susan Pettits. At wing attack, Kimberly Green. At centre, Paige Hadley. At wing defence, Abby McCulloch. At goal defence, Julie Corlino. At goalkeeper, Shani Leighton. Substitutions, Aaron Hall, Jay Clark, Taylor Davies, Michaela Lawson and Stephanie Wood. Coached by Rob Wright, ladies and gentlemen, the New South Wales Swifts. Taking to the court for the Mission Queensland Firebirds. At goal shooter, Romelda Aiken. At goal attack, Gretel Tippetts. At wing attack, Caitlin Nevins. At centre, Kimberly Rebellion. At wing defence, Gabby Simpson. At goal defence, Claire McManaman. At goalkeeper, Laura Geitz. Substitutions, Rebecca Bully, Laura Clemisha, Beryl Friday, Verity Simmons and Amaret Weil. Coached by Rosalie Jenke, ladies and gentlemen, the Mission Queensland Firebirds. So the City of Brisbane has well and truly got behind this team. If they win, the Story Bridge will turn purple. The Treasury Casino will turn purple. 
so there's Ellis. The party has been planned, but uh, there's a lot of support for the Swifts here as well. There is, and rightly so. And I guess the Firebirds have been the team that has really set the pace in this competition right through until today's match. But the one team who can match it with them and take this game from them are the team in red, the New South Wales Swifts. It's been a long week for Queenslanders. They lost the rugby last Saturday, the rugby league on Wednesday. They need the Firebirds to get the win today just for state pride. So will it be lucky number 13 in a row for the Firebirds? They've waited a year for this moment. Can they go one better in 2015 or will the Swifts spoil their party? It's the 2015 ANZ Championship okay. Grand Final is officially go from Brisbane and it is the Firebirds in possession. Tippett, she's a nervous player and it can be a nervous starter. This is her first grand final. She will be nervous and you can see with that shot absolutely no follow through on the ball. She's not a confident shooter at the best of times but she does start well in that first quarter. That's not the ideal start for her. I think that right arm felt like concrete on that <laughs> shot. So the Swifts Chance to land the first punch. Kim Green, see the compression socks on. And then the high lob into Thwaites. And it's penalised against Geitz. She stands out of play. Caitlin Thwaites for the opener. Well, I'm going to go early and say that the end that the Swifts are shooting at now will be the scoring end. It's the New Zealand umpire, John O'Bredlin. He will penalise defenders, so the Swifts must make the most of the possession that they will be gifted. So, whereas left of screen, the Australian umpire, and play will be let to go a little bit more. Not so then, a clean take from Geitz. Oh, big cross-court pass then. Valiant calls Aiken out instead. Swooping was Tippett and the chairlift attempt from Corletto and Leighton. It's the first time I've seen them do that. They went very, very close. And the Jamaican, call as you like with the steady air. It's one goal apiece. Abated breaking wing attack. Oh, beautiful read then from Corletto. Tippett responsible for that turnover. Contact, Greta Tippett ranked number one in the league for turnover and number one in the league for bad passes. Plates into Contact. Susan Pettit. And she opens her accounts. She's been the most informed goal attack in the league this season. Controversially overlooked for the Australian Diamond squad, although the coach Lisa Alexander is here today. She will choose that final 12 this afternoon and hasn't put an official line through Pettit's name. Waits with a perfect start. She rocks back and the Swifts have come to play. Brilliant start from the New South Wales Swifts. They did this in the conference final. Then they fatigued. They don't have that level of fatigue this time. Hell ball against Tippett. No one to throw to. The Firebirds all run backwards. I think Tippett needs to steady those nerves, Liz. It's so important. I know that uh, the Firebirds spoke about they got the triple AFL Premiership star Simon Black in to talk this week about it. The team that settles first. Big turnover then from Gabby Simpson and really for both teams they will rely on their big name players. They're players who have been there and done it before. So Simpson and Geitz making early inroads defensively. Here's Tippett again. It's a two-on-one under the post. Really makes Aitham work. Contact call against Coletto. The contact was with the post. <laughs> and Aitken pegs one back. But it's called go to pins. No panic from Kim Green. Oh, though, miscommunication between the Swiss players in Corletto and Abby McCulloch. Well, she opted to go long. Paige Hadley was short. And the ball went straight between McCulloch and Corletto. So absolutely no talk then between those two players. And you can see Kim Green wants to win it back. She's such a competitor. She's energised, Kim Green. They yes. need her out there. Only played three quarters in the last 16 or so because of injury. So the Firebirds sending it into attack again. A chance to level it up. Revalian on the edge of the circle. That's too easy in to tip it. And that will get the adrenaline pumping for Gretel Tippett. Let's go down to courtside, Sarah Allen. Kelly, a couple of nervous passes already. 
from Gretel Tippett. Rosalie Jenke yelling out to her defenders, get down on the transverse line and give her an easy option so that she can ease herself into the match. Just beautiful play there from Corletto and Leighton, especially Corletto just drifted back and she's doing it a lot, drifting back into Aiken. Oh, and it's giving, she's giving herself a lot of space to go for the intercept. So she's causing so havoc just by virtue of the fact that she's giving herself plenty of room to move. And it skirting the perimeter. Contact. The two foundation players combine in Pettit and Green. They're the Contact. only two players in this Swifts outfit that played in that 2008 championship. And now Pettit to make it two from two. Hadley, her first grand final. Reconstruction last year and has really stepped it up a notch in this final series. Great defensive hustle applied here by the Firebirds. That's why they've been the best team for the year so far. A little one two into Thwaites and she knocks it down. Beautiful possession play there from the Swifts. They kept it short that way they don't give the Firebirds defensive line a run at it. Really smart. And they've thrown it away. Aitken can't control the ball. And I guess, Liz, you know that the Firebirds are going to come out hard and pressure you. And you really have to absorb the pressure if you are the Swifts. You do. And you've got to absorb it right from this end of the court. So the Firebirds have the best defensive record in the league. And it's not just their circle defenders who allow them to do that or who keep the, the scores tight. Job, it's actually side. the pressure that comes from the goal shooting end right down. Working okay. the angles, using every inch of the netball court. And this is a handy lead for the Swifts. They've skipped out to a three-goal lead. And no surprise, a tactical timeout has been called. Swift bench is up. The players rose as one when the timeout was called. When it, your opposition calls timeout when they're down, you know that you've got something on them. They'll be happy with this. So a chance for Rosalie Jenke just to bring them together. A slow start for the Queensland Firebirds, but still a long way to go. Of course, netball doesn't finish today. We've got the World Cup coming up and the ANZ Netball Nation inviting you to celebrate our great game of netball. You can join us on Saturday, the 25th of July, to celebrate National Netball Day. You just have to visit the website there on your screen. Let's see if we can go into the Swifts huddle. For a couple of them, I reckon, because they wanted, they're actually playing quite long. So expect them to try and shorten up the game now, I think, a little bit. Anastasia Palaszczuk, newly elected Premier of Queensland, sitting next to Nolene Dix, President of Netball Australia. Clear the power seats in the stadium. <laughs> Great start from the visitors, the New South Wales Swifts. Off to a scorching start. They're quick out the blocks content. here. Can they capitalise? Really interesting to hear Rob Wright say to Abby McCulloch and Julie Coletto, you need a short option and a long option. That last big turnover from Kim Green, they were both long and they were both on the same side of the court. Beautiful shot under pressure from Bradley. She's come to play. She say Susan Pettit. Four from four. Commentators are nervous too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a little lucky break bad. there and Tippett can oh. mop up and again the challenge. The Swift defenders are trying to get in their head at the moment, Liz. We haven't seen this move all year. Why are they pulling it out now? Well, why wouldn't you want to pull out a huge move on the grand final stage? It's an easy one for Guy. She covered Flakes, and it was a nothing pass from Kim Green. We had no more options left. They can really push long and wide. Offside wing defence. They are really trying to get her out, moving away from the post. Offside. Double teamed. Release it. Here's the Jamaican. It'll be Tippett's ball. Goal defence. Back on the two back. Just a contact call there. Look at that call that Owen later with trying to use a lift on the pass into Aiken. That's not a, that's a reasonably smart move. She's trying to get under her skin, getting her head at the moment. Is, is that the tactic? Oh, well, it's also getting in the head of the people who are feeding the ball into her. You want to make them, Tippett and Nevins in particular, start to wonder about where the space is. So they're double teaming up. Oh, call it on. Oh, unlucky. It was the offside call against McCulloch, too. That was good. Call it. I read it well. Tippett's going to go all the way at full short. 
I think it's been called the penalty not set. I'm oh, sorry, it was a free pass only and uh, it was an offside call. That's right, free pass only and Tippett's gone from the shot. So a couple of errors and mounting up in attack for the Firebirds. Susan and Green, they will not take a backward step. Kim Green out there, just about Bad playing on one leg. She's got the calf niggle. Bad contact. She is as tough as they come. Tough pass for Thwaites. Oh, somehow beats the two defenders of the Firebirds and she finishes off some great play. Well, the Swifts had all stopped running then. Just watch Corletto here. Beautiful read. Goal defence. She started the game. It's best I've seen her play this year, Julie Corletto. Just on fire. Chance for a four-goal lead for the Swifts. And they have set the challenge down to the Queensland Firebirds. Bad of destruction. Bad of contact. Wing attack. Contact. Happy to let Tippett take it and then eventually into Romelda Aiken. And she drops her fourth goal. Better build up for the Firebirds. And one of the reasons is that Kim Revalian took charge then on the on the Firebirds move down court okay, and told Gretel okay. Tippett, get in the circle. Tippett needs to start yes. driving into the circle just to break up later than Corletto. At the moment they're having it all their own way. They're able to double back and she's out of the circle. She's not a threat. Valian and Hadley, toe to toe, best of mates, both from Jackson. Sydney. Goal defence. Intimidation. And they maintain that four goal lead. Great body language from the Swifts, they're vocal. Oh, Tippett and McCulloch off the ball. And it will be a Firebirds ball. Tippett pops out on the baseline. Better move. She's starting to look more comfortable in goals now. Three from five after missing a few early shots. So Corletto looking to set something up, but that just had a bit too much heat on it, that pass. Yeah, beautiful defensive pressure from the Firebirds. Just wore the Swifts down, forced them into error. Swifts now returning the favour. Every single pass is pressured. Evans loops it over the top. Oh. Perfect placement and what a strong take in the air for Aitken. Here we go again, the skyscraper. Aitken can't get anywhere near that perfect position from Aitken. And back-to-back -back goals and they're well and truly back in this contest. Just too easy access to goal there from the Firebirds. The best access they've had this game, just moving the ball well. And the same at the other end. Caitlin Flakes has had a good opening quarter. Good. It's been super. Yeah. Seven from seven. Still three and a half minutes to play in this first quarter. Nevins a fumble. And that's a swift ball. Caitlin Nevins sat on the bench with the Melbourne Vixens when they won the championship last year in Melbourne. Contact goal attack. Just a really good clash between Nevins and McCulloch. Neither of them superstars in their team, but both of them people who really do a huge amount of work to make the superstars look good. And it's often in games like this, Liz, where it's your second tier players that decide whether you win or you lose, because you know your superstars are going to perform. It's so true. It's how that next tier stands up. He's one of the superstars, the skipper in Geitz, got the defensive rebound. They're rare, particularly against the Swifts, the most accurate shooting combination in the league. rebellion has got some space in the pocket, instead they go to Aitken. Now this is long range, she will not shoot from there, she wants it back, Leighton will make her work for it. And well played Aitken. Leighton did everything right then, but grow a couple of inches, and the ball was perfect for Aitken. Pettit, risky, oh, so athletic in the air, oh, Kim Peter. Green. Contact. A couple of times the Swifts have gone into that pocket. I expect that Rosalie Jenkins will tell Laura Geitz to start getting out and having a go at those. Well, that's two misses in a row, Liz. So momentum just starting to swing. It was a nervy start for the Firebirds. Swifts couldn't miss. And misses like that are going to prove costly. 
Back out by two. Swifts lead it. Oh, footwork call. So stepping against Caitlin Nevins, she was really patient and waited for Aiken to open up, but just couldn't keep a balance. A good pressure from Leighton, just to force Aiken to move for that extra second. It's a long drive through the centre of the court by Pettit. They're just so patient, aren't they, Liz? Uh, don't panic. Yes, waiting yeah. for the best avenue. It's a very, very Bonus different contact. approach to the Firebirds Bonus that just contact. their first option is to look long and go one out with Aitken. Well, you can see when it works. When the Swifts are patient, just keep control of the ball and have little short, sharp passes into the circle, they tend to score. When they've gone long and tried to force it, the Firebirds have come up with the turnover. So Firebirds got back within two. And now Bonus the Swifts have put their foot down and can get it back out to a four-goal lead. Bonus. And it rolls in for the weights. <laughs> You see Slate then, she almost went, was wondering where Gites was. She knew she was behind her. Vantage wing obstruction. Beautiful move from Tippett. Just a lovely little front cut. <laughs> Massive win for Gites. The Swifts have tried to put the ball over her head on numerous occasions. And they get the ball via the offside. So the margin is three. There's still time to score. In the conference final two weeks ago, the Swifts led by three at quarter time. Will it be an instant replay? Aiken, the clock might be against her here. Hold time, says the umpire. Yeah, good contest then from McCulloch. She was in a really good contesting position. Didn't have the penalty advanced. And Tippett will take the shot and time beats them. So just like the Australian Conference Final on this court two weeks ago, the New South Wales Swifts with their nose in front at the first break. They lead it by three in the championship decider. It's the Swifts 14, the Firebirds 11. Looking around, like keep, yeah. as soon as we keep that little bit of movement, what, what's she getting you for on the? You know, she said that. When I was setting up the, the lift, my yeah. elbows. Okay. 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 So, so just, 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 just step, just try and take a little step forward on it. The chance is in front of me. Just, so maybe just tell. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, but I'm only talking. I'm talking probably that much because we only need to. Because then you free up your arms on it. So and then we, then we'll be good on it. So we've played 15 minutes in the ANZ Championship Grand Final. The Swifts found their rhythm and their timing early. The Firebirds a little jittery. And it's the Swifts by three goals, Liz Ellis. Just turnovers, both teams reasonably even. The Firebirds shot out to an early unwanted lead there, but they started to pull it in the last parts of that quarter. Penalties favour the Swifts at the moment, just 11. The Firebirds have given away 16. I will expect that to swap now. The Firebirds are down the uh, Australian umpire's end, Sharon Kelly's end defensively. They will be allowed to contest that a little bit more. The Swifts will have to come off the body. Sharni Layton and Julie Corletto teaming up for the chairlift for the first time this season. Have not seen it, and what a stage to bring it out on in the grand final. It's just about giving the, the Firebirds something else to think about. So, plenty of feeling and spirit in this one, as we expected. Oh, and Leighton. Just a little late on the challenge with Tippett. The Swifts really do have to go for those. They've got to start to try and cut off ball out in front of the circle, especially once Tippett and Aitken get into a little rhythm. And that's a better start for the Firebirds. Listening in on the huddle, Rosalie Jenke, the coach of the Firebirds, was Sarah Allen. Sarah. Cal Rose really concentrating on Caitlin Nevins and Kim Revellian in that break, telling Caitlin Nevins to come up through the middle of the court and present when they're transitioning from defence to attack. She's also urging her attackers to use the fake and then throw into Aiken. Fake it out, open up the space, and then throw it in long. Caitlin Thwaites a little flustered, throws the ball away. And in the blink of an eye, it's going to be end-to-end -end netball because Aiken will bring them back within one goal. Great win then from Kim Revalian, and it was the pressure in the middle of the circle that was being put on by Geitz of Minimum and forced Waits to go to the outside, and it was Revalian's footwork that saw her get around Hadley and win the ball. Big win. 
So, but now four goals from eight attempts. As you see there, Rebellion's footwork. Just one of the ball then. Goalkeeper. There you are, shooter. Obstruction. Quick ball movement, and it results in a long bomb. That's better from Caitlin Thwaites. And uh, former star shooter of this game, watching closely on the sidelines is Kath Cox. Coxie, what have you made of this start? Oh, a fantastic start. I'm loving watching this game. Very interesting listening to the Swifts huddle just now. Assistant coach Anita Killen went straight to Paige Hadley, said, don't fluff around around the top of the circle. Take those drives into the pocket, which I find fascinating because that's where Laura Geitz loves the ball. You're going to go to the pocket. You've got to be sure of yourself and the pass has to be perfect. Both Swifts defenders throwing everything at that ball and still I can't get even a tip on it. Well, they've got to throw everything at it because you're going to win one eventually, but you've got to make sure you're in there and contesting and trying to force, especially Ramelda Aitken, into dropping the ball. Head it into Thwaites. Caitlin Thwaites, 9 from 10 in the first quarter. And she started the second well. What I like about what Caitlin Thwaites is doing is that she's on the move, so she's making the umpires see where the contact is coming from. When Thwaites gets caught standing still, that's when Geitz could get around her and push her into position. And it's been the question mark on her game in recent seasons, that one-on-one -on -one okay. Australian style of defence. Did she have the fitness to go the full 60 minutes? But she's such a much improved player this year. Thwaites with five MVPs throughout the regular season. Tippett okay. tries the layup. Green thought about the long bomb into Thwaites. Gites had it covered. So now they move backwards sideways. Green bullet-like pass. Almost just see the smothering defence. Kim side Green side. just swatted Claire McMenamin away. Kim Green's got the ball in her hands. You almost need eyes in the back of your head because you never know which direction it's going to go. And the pressure over the shot came from Gites. Well, a smart play from Guy. Susan Pettit doesn't like a, held, a hold on her shot. She likes to balk and try and move the attackers away. The Firebirds would know that. They know they've got to get a good, strong three feet and just get their hands up in the air and keep it there. Rebellion. Tip it. The jump and release into Aitken. And that's the win that Shani Layton has been waiting for. She's contested everything, and you've just got to wait for the ball that drops a couple of millimetres short. So they've got the defensive stop at one end. The key is now to score, and this is where the Firebirds are so good in transition. They just smother everything. Must convert the Swifts. Pettit. A screen set by Kim Green. And strong on Revalian. Just watch Leighton here, the timing's good and just, oh, it's only a matter of millimetres in it. But the fact that she was front position, it allowed her to get the ball. Great combination. Green and Pettit. On the and to get her back out by four goals a game. Just going to watch Green and Pettit at the moment. When the Swifts get into trouble, they look for each other and they're the ones that bring the ball down court. So here we go again. Green, Pettit to Green. Paige Hadley struggling to find some space. Kim Revalian is really smothering her. Just There's the look away pass from Kim Green, top of the circle. Into Thwaites. And here is the biggest lead for the final so far. They're out by five. Tick under ten minutes left before half time. That's why Kim Green is so important, is why she must play the full Pulling 60 minutes. The and the Swifts camp very coy on that this week. Has Compare she got the 60 keeper. minutes in her? Yeah. Kim Green spoke to media yesterday and said absolutely. And the coach, Rob Wright, said, I'm not sure if she's even got two quarters. <laughs> and you know what? The moment he said that, I thought she's right to play 60. <laughs> and they throw it away. Pettit's pass misfired into Kim Green. So Geitz looking to set something up for her team. Been on the back foot in this final so far. Oh, now it's a Swift's turn to be smothering. Oh, it didn't look to be too much in that, but Kim Revalian had front space, so she does get the benefit of the doubt. 
so loud in here at least that some players are struggling to hear the whistle. Hadley, I think, thought she'd come away with that. And that's why Romelda Aiken has the most rebounds in the game. She dominates that stat every year. And you know when it's loud, it's hard to hear each other on court, so you're relying on... Uh... Oh, Leighton! Shani Leighton charged out, eyes only for the ball. And as a Firebirds mid-quarter, it takes courage to back back hearing those footsteps come. Can Thwaites finish off Leighton's great work? She does. Vantage contact, wing defence. Dice. Hadley goes down. It's hot right now. It's good stuff. Leighton oh. again. So Leighton at one end and Geitz at the other, and the two goalkeepers are the stars of the show at the minute. Oh, don't you love it? <laughs> as soon as I said that, I knew we were in trouble. <laughs> Shani Leighton, not an intercept in the first quarter, not a deflection, comes up with two crucial intercepts within two minutes in this second. Well, as they say, defence wins championships no matter what sport you're playing, and at the moment we are seeing two of the best defenders in the world. Shani Leighton and Laura Geitz. The Aussie Diamonds coach, Lisa Alexander, is in the stands. This is almost a, a defence-off for who gets that starting goalkeeping position for the Aussie Diamonds. But first of all, a timeout. It's been called by King Green, and it looks legit. Looks legit, but she's smiling. I think she'll be grimacing. And you know what? King Green will play on one leg. Yep, she will. Especially in a game like this. But the timeout comes at a good time for the Firebirds. Just six goals in seven and a half minutes of netball. So what what can the Firebirds do right now if you're Rosalie Jenke? What are you saying? I mean, they're still well and truly in this contest. There is a long way to go, but they haven't come out and played their best netball. The Swifts have been perfect. You know what? I reckon the Swifts are doing a really good job defensively. They're keeping Aitken and Tippett apart. When you look at the stats, Gretel Tippett's had 11 centre pass receives. Caitlin Nevins has had four. That really does reverse that stat from really the whole season. Caitlin Nevins has dominated the centre pass receives. It looked to me, it looks to me like Tippett's getting caught out trying to do too much work. That makes it harder for her to get into the circle to split the Swifts defenders. They need to get Nevins out taking the centre pass and get Tippett driving into the circle. So, from that, Caitlin Nevins, a slow start. Is she being well held by Abby McCulloch, as we see, and Sergeant, one of the selectors for the Australian Diamonds, sitting alongside Lisa Alexander. And Mark Caldo, the other selector. So, three wise ladies. <laughs> Really, with the fate of so many of the players on court in their hands. And they're heading off in their long meeting this afternoon to pick the 12 that will contest the World Cup. Do they need more from Nevins? Yeah, they do, but they need her getting out on the centre pass. She's got to start to take some pressure on, off Tippett. And Abby McCulloch is doing a really good job on Nevins. Kim Green soldiering on, sets the screen, but it's irrelevant because Pettit goes into Thwaites on the baseline over the Australian captain. As easy as you like. That pass into Caitlin Thwaites, a high pass. It's taking a risk, but what she's really doing is moving Geitz around and getting Geitz up against her back. It just makes the space obvious and an easier pass to throw. It's a real test of character for the Firebirds coming in towards the last five minutes of the first half. They must stay with the Swiss, but they must start to eat into this lead. And they are losing this second quarter, Liz. They've lost three of their 15 second quarters for the year. So they're in unfamiliar territory. They are, and they haven't been challenged like this this year, especially in the latter parts. And yes, it's great to come in with momentum. Now, I wrote in my, in my column this week that momentum is a major thing coming into a grand final. But the Swifts have been challenged and they've had to dig deep, and that is what's holding them in good stead at the moment. Better from Tippett. You know, she looks more comfortable when she's on the move. And the finish from Aiken. 13 from 13 for Romelda. Tippett's got five from 10. Thwaites has got 16 and Pettit's got seven. 
So it's why it's really, I mean, they've shared the um, shooting between them for a lot of this season, but Whites with 16 has been the go-to girl. Back out by five, not yet. A second opportunity here for Susan Pettit. Wants to perform on the big stage. So hungry for success. And five minutes left in the first half. The Swifts lead it by five. Not many saw this coming. Oh, Layton again. Beautiful footwork. She read it. Shani Layton. Do you want to call it? I own the first quarter for the Swifts. Shani Layton owns his second quarter. Gee, it's been a good defensive effort. Barnett's contact with the ball. Have Lee finds some space in the midcourt to Green, to McCulloch. He passes, gets on the move. Such a hard runner. Which way does it fall? Kim Green and Geitz, the Australian captain and the Australian vice captain. A couple of elbows and the skipper wins out. Just an offside call. And he should obstruction offside and we attack obstruction. So good defensive effort for the Firebirds. Oh, Corletto so close and Aitken so high. Back within four. That's the thing with this Firebirds team, they can score quickly once they get possession. Oh, Laura Geitz, her tenth penalty, the most penalised player on court. Her counterpart at the other end, Charlie Layton, just four penalties for the match. There's that lob. Revalian does it so well into Aitken. Great take and a great finish. So now four minutes left before half time. Margin is four. They're edging closer. High ball into Thwaites. She can't miss. Just one so far in nearly a half of netball. Well, Kate, Caitlin Thwaites shot 17 from, I think, about 21 in that last in the conference final, already sitting at 18. What a game she's having. Players are tiring out there, Liz. It's just opening up a little bit, and it it's is. a little easier to get into attack. Just a bit of a shootout in the last few minutes between Thwaites and Aitken. Centre contact. Vantage upside wing. Kim Green barking instructions into Pettit. And they are holding on to this buffer. Tip it again, so she took the centre pass, and now it takes her a little while to get back in. She needs to come off the line and let Nevins really take that space. Look about the body language of the two benches. The Swifts are up. They are. Every really pass, every whistle, the Swifts players, the five on the bench, up clapping, whereas the Firebirds just very calm on their bench. Vantage contact centre. In the pocket is Green. He can bring it back to Hadley. Great defence. Oh, and Geitz, just a tangle of legs. An accidental trip. Slates was standing still, and Geitz hit the deck. She was quick to get up on her feet. Oh, that left knee heavily strapped. Laura Geitz had knee surgery before the start of this season. So two minutes to go before half time. The biggest lead has been five, but the Firebirds are certainly clinging on. That is contact on the fence. Contact Minute and a half to go. I reckon the Firebirds have to make a change in that wing attack position. They've run Caitlin Nevins all year, but she's got three goal assists and just six ten of pass receives for the game. She's been taken out of the game by Abby McCulloch. And the Firebirds need a wing attack. And you've got a specialist wing attack sitting on the bench in Verity Simmons. Played the first two games. She was the first choice wing attack. Broke her wrist in New Zealand. And since then has uh, only played a quarter or so in that Aussie Conference final a couple of weeks ago. And I reckon she would be stinging to be able to try and make amends for last year's grand final. Coughed up plenty of possession. There's Amy Wilde. She also played, large, played last year's grand final. Simpson!
suddenly the eighth player has come into this. The yeah. crowd is jeering, booing, cheering. They don't love Laura Geitz being penalised, but the umpire is very clear about what the penalty is for. Aitken went up high. Leighton was able to mop it up, though. Okay. There's still 30 seconds left. Yeah, so much plenty, desperation. Plenty of time. That is not the size. That is contact all attack. Oh, oh, Kim Green with a bullet into Pettit with the finish. And that's as good as it gets in great. netball. Kim that Green at her very there. best. That really does sum up the Swiss first half, that entire okay. play. So there's still time here for the Firebirds. Will it be five goals? Will it be four? Tippett steps in, the layout rolls out. Aiken! Yes. So the margin at halftime will be five. The Firebirds have only trailed once at halftime so far this year, and that was against the Magic all the way back in round eight. So for the second time in 2015, the Firebirds are down, and they've got a fight on their hands. The Swifts leader by five, Sarah Allen. Laura Guides, the Swifts seem to just jump you at the start there. What do you put that down to? Oh, we know they're a, obviously a really strong starting team and they come out firing. And um, I think we've done well just to absorb the pressure. We're making a few silly mistakes so the second half. We'll be concentrating on just taking a breath when we've got the, the got the ball. You're the real leader of this side. You're down by five. What's the message at halftime? Oh, totally 100% still in our five goals is uh, a rebound and an intercept. So we just got to take a couple of minutes just to take some time out and compose ourselves and we'll be good for the second half. All the best in the second half. And Catherine Cox is with Shani Layton. Well, Shani Layton up by five at half time. You must be thrilled. What is it that's getting you across the line at the moment? Um, look, we've just been sticking to what we knew that we had to do and been working on it um, all season and thank God it's coming in today. But finals are a whole ball game. We've got another half to go, so we've got to come out like it's 0-0 next quarter. Absolutely. Cliche. Absolutely. When we know it's a grand final, it's intense, but you guys actually genuinely look like you're enjoying it out there. Yeah, mate. I love playing. I love playing with this group of girls. I'm lucky to be a Swift and so I can't wait to get here, get out in the second half. All the best for the second half, Chance. Thanks, mate. Yeah, there's intensity. It is the definition of it. Charney Leighton, the Swifts fans have travelled and they'd be pretty happy because it is half time and the Swifts lead it by five. Don't go anywhere. The second half is next. Brisbane Entertainment Centre. We are full to capacity and the stadium is rocking. That is Dami Im and her brand new single Smile, keeping the crowd in the mood during the main break. It's been loud, it's been energised and it's everything that we had hoped for in this first half. The Swifts have thrown down the challenge to the favourites, the Firebirds, and they lead it by five goals. They do and the Swifts really came out hard in that first quarter. We saw them do that in the conference final and then started to stutter in the second quarter but they ran just as hard in that second quarter. You can see the stats there. Brilliant shooting from the Swifts. Thwaites and Pettits are simply on fire. Both teams have a similar number of attempts. Queensland just have the edge in terms of rebounds but the intercepts, they've both come from the goalkeeper. Shani Layton has three. Uh, Laura Geitz has two. So both teams' goalkeepers have been bookends for them. The turnover rate has come right down for both teams and that we talked in the conference final that first 15 minutes of netball was the best we've seen all year. I reckon the 15 minutes we just saw in the second quarter was close to the best we've seen all year. Just really great ball movement from the Swifts. The Firebirds started to get on a little bit of a roll. They started to deliver the ball a lot earlier into Imelda Aiken. I reckon they're still having problems across that transverse line, though. They need a little bit more from Tippett, and they need a little bit more from Caitlin Nevins to start to find that link into Ramelda Aiken. The Swifts defensively have just been so good. Shani Layton and Julie Corletto are on to absolutely anything that isn't perfect, and they are making the Firebirds pay. Well, you wrote in your Fairfax column during the week that Shani Layton was your season MVP for the league, and she is showing why in this first half. So much energy and so much desperation. It looks it's almost impossible for any netballer to line up against Ramelda Aiken, but somehow Layton wins a loose ball here and there. She does, and she's done it really well. So in the first quarter, she was getting beaten, didn't have.
credit very much to her name in terms of intercepts. She was a little bit late on some things. The ball was just going over her head. But she's really thought her way into this game. With Shani Layton, she has little lapses in different parts of the game sometimes. But I reckon today she's come to play. She started a little bit slow, but she's built really strongly into the game. She is one of the superstars of the league, and today she's showing why. So much to look forward to in the second half of the season decider, live from the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. And it's the Swifts. They led by four at quarter time. And they have extended that to five at the main break. It's 30 to 25. The second half is next. This is our country, our growing population. This is our leader. These are our colors and our traditional dance. We speak our own language. These are our warriors. This is our army. And together, we are the Netball Nation. Well, so far it's been worth the entrance fee. The New South Wales Swifts on a mission. Can they cause the biggest boil over in the eight grand finals we've seen of the ANZ champs so far? They lead by five goals over the red hot favourites, the Queensland Firebirds. It's 30 to 25. And we've got plenty of stats to talk you through for this game. Every time the Swifts have led at halftime, they've gone on to win in 2015. And what about this, Liz Ellis? Talk us through the Caitlin Quates factor. It is a huge factor. We talked earlier in the year about the Karen Bailey factor for the Vixens, but for the Swifts, the Thwaites factor. She scores 29 or more goals. The Swifts win. 10 wins, zero losses. When she scores that, 28 or less, the Swifts lose. And this crowd has been whipped into a frenzy. Like a meringue. They are in the mood. <laughs> and we're underway in this second half. Strap yourself in. It's brave of you to call it Queensland and a Moran Kelly. <laughs> I had nothing to do with that, but Caitlin Thwaites just popped her 19th goal. Nine more goals, and the Thwaites factor does it come into play for the Swifts. Perfect pass. Great start, Rebellion. And Aitken is the only shooter out there that uh, hasn't missed. As we get to Sarah Allen. Kale, a big change on court for the Firebirds. McMenamum has gone to wing defence. Beck Bully has come on to goal defence, which means Gabby Simpson has gone to the bench, which we haven't seen for five or six weeks at least. But the coaches have just had a quick word to Gabby. I reckon they've said to her, be ready to come back on if we need you. Gabby Simpson benched. And I reckon that's from Kim Green. She's just starting in that second half, just or first half, sorry, the second quarter, just started to get in front of Simpson on the front cuts to the top of the circle. And Kim Green has had a, such a huge influence in this game. And Claire McMenamin, her job will be to try and stop her. Abby Simpson, whose finals campaign has been simply outstanding. So the coaching staff at the Queensland Firebirds not afraid to make the risky moves. Okay. And keeping a close eye on her former team this afternoon is Kath Cox. Coxie? Well, no surprises over on this bench, Kel. No changes whatsoever. Very interesting to see Rob Wright out here well and truly before the team at the halftime break. Obviously quite happy with the way things are tracking. King Green didn't in join in with the ball drills. The girls did it at halftime. Instead chose to do some footwork, so we'll just keep an eye on her car. We will catch up with both coaches very shortly in this third quarter. Get their insights. Well, it's oh. a risky pass. It is a risky pass. We've been waiting for Laura Geitz to come and have a go at one of those all game. And Kim Green might have had a little bit to say then. Well, that's a massive call. Susan Pettit called for contact with the ball. Contact. So the Firebirds defenders just kept their hands still and Pettit deemed to have pushed the ball into them. Contact. Yeah. Cool that I'm incredulous. She went with the outside arm. Oh, great hands from Tippett. 
into Aiken. And the margin, which was six only a few moments ago, is back to four. And that's that contact, smart play from Rebecca Bully. I reckon the Firebirds have to turn and give much quicker ball into Romelda Aiken. They're taking a long time, and it's giving the Swift defenders plenty of time to set up and get a good look at the ball as it comes in. And four becomes three. Now look at the Firebirds bench, they're up. I wonder what the coach Rosalie Denke thinks of this. It's been quite a surge from the home side. Let's go to the Firebirds bench because Sarah Allen, if she can hear me, is with Rosalie Denke. Rose, what did you say to the girls at halftime that has sparked this? Uh, look, we just had to work a lot harder. Um, you know, it's there for them. They played really well all season, but they weren't playing to the best that they can. They still aren't. And look, it's Swifts are playing really well. And they're really taking it up to us. And, but it's going to be a four-quarter effort today. And it's not for the faint-hearted out there. It's a great game. And talk us through the decision to bring Gabby to the bench and put Claire into wing defence. Oh, look, Beth has played superbly all season in that change-up. And um, we need her just to take... put some pressure on Green and just nullify her. And a fair crowd today, isn't it? Oh, it's a great crowd. Thanks, we need to, um, really reward them. Thanks. <laughs> well, they're threatening to reward them because here they come and the noise is deafening. Unbelievable. I have no idea what Rose Jenkins just said. <laughs> Must have been good. I heard her say it's a great game. Man. <laughs> I thought that was a good comment. Oh, this is extraordinary. Just things can turn in an instant. Well, we knew they would come, Liz. We knew they would come. It was just a matter of when. Swifts led by six in the opening minutes of this quarter. Firebirds were able to get it back to within one. This is riveting, edge of your seat stuff. Still got so long to go. Tip it. She's got just the eight goals so far. That's a better follow through on that shot from the former basketballer. Well, tip it. Three from three from this quarter. Best little passage of play that she's had. And look at this smothering defence. The Firebirds have gone up another level defensively. Beautiful play, Kim Green. There's the opening. Into Pettit. Yeah, leave her down by herself under the post. She'll knock it down every time. Let's find out what Rob Wright, coaching in his very first grand final, thinks about this with Taff Cox. Well, Rob, we saw a very similar game to this in the semi-final a few weeks ago. You came out of the blocks, but the Firebirds clawed back. What do the Swiss need to do to settle here? Oh, look, I, I just think we've defensively we've just got our structures wrong at the moment. We've probably played a little bit too conservative and allowing them a bit too easy passage to the circle. Like, I think our attack's been, attack's been good um, up until that. Oh, I like that one. Um, um, yeah, like, the more we can pressure them, the better. And I thought we did that in the first half a lot. Talking of attack, how important and incredible is how important is it for you to have Kim going out on court? Oh, look, some of the theme today, uh, it's just been unbelievable. She just puts um, some amazing ball in. Like, she's been um, really world class today, and um, that's why we wanted her right for this game, because I think she shows just how good she is. Great. All the best for the rest of the game. Thanks very much. So, Rob Ryan, a chance to win his premiership, a premiership in just his second year. This is going to be the longest quarter and a half of netball he's probably ever seen. As Corletto has gone down heavily and she's grabbing at her face. I reckon she's copped an elbow. And I was going to comment earlier that the Swifts defenders just need to be careful. Romelda Aiken, when she's oh, taking the ball, ball, yeah, is really swinging those elbows around. She's in a bad way here, Julie Corletto. This is huge in the context of this game. Corletto has been magnificent. Two intercepts, the rebound. Straight good. away, the question from Rob Wright to Sharni, is she OK? Well, the good news is it's just blood, it's just a nose. <laughs> I don't know that her, her husband, Daryl Corletto, would be that happy about it. a blood stopper. How good has she been, though? Such an experienced big game player. Aitken's elbows, yeah. Oh. Oh. That was accidental, but Aiken has come down all elbows. But you look at that, you go, eh, it's a struggle for the ball. 
Well, she's tough, Liz. You only have to look at her history with her knees to know that. I was told a few years ago when she was playing for the Melbourne Vixens that she needed the realignment on the knee and that not many professional athletes had come back from that and that probably her career would be over. But here she is all these years later. And I reckon the Swifts medical staff all they want to do is just stop the bleeding yeah, and get her back it. out on court. She will get out on court. It's just a matter of stopping the bleeding. Break or no break? Doesn't matter. Ever break your nose? No, nah, but I saw Kath Cox break her nose once. I shouldn't laugh. That's really mean. A story for another day, I yeah. think. It was, look, it was just a post-grand final party. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. <laughs> now here's a replay of it. Oh. And her nose flattened. Absolutely flattened, and that's got to hurt. And they are working frantically to try and just stem the flow. And Sarah Allen is only a few metres away. Sarah, are they, are they getting the job done there? It looks like they are. There's blood everywhere, Kel. Blood all over her hands, on her legs. She was quite distressed. Julie Coletto is a really tough cookie. There's still a cut across the top of her nose, but I think she'll go back on. Fingers crossed she plays out the rest of the match. Well, they reckon those big boys in the state of origin are tough on Wednesday night, Liz. That was just an entree. Now, this is a real crucial moment in this match. Halfway through the third quarter, it's often called the championship quarter. Gretel Tippett has just come up with a magnificent intercept to give her team back possession. Julie Corletto, she just has to play on. The Swifts are a bit light on defensively. Eight minutes left before three-quarter time. The Swifts have led from the very first whistle. The margin was as much as six. Firebirds have cut it to two, and it's 35 to 33. Aitken with the ball in her hands to make it a one-goal game. Here's a tip of the set that I wanted to look at. You know, I've pointed to this. She's really good defensively. We talk a lot about her attack and how potent her and Romelda Aitken are, but it's a defensive brittle tippet that could be the difference in this match. Just beautiful movement there from the Swifts. Kim Green is so strong on the edge of the circle. And it needs to go. Oh, she faked. Almost, almost cost her. And the crowd wanted the three-second rule implemented there. Corletto, just a bandage over the nose. Now the Swift Spencers just checked with the umpire about the timeout situation. The umpire has said that Julie Corletto's timeout was a blood timeout, so there is still a timeout left in this quarter. It may yet get called. Pettit's got the new opponent in Beck Bully, Liz. And Beck's done a really good job. She did a great job in that conference final when she came on, just got a hand to a few balls. But the goal assist in Aiken. Rebecca Bully could become the first player to win three premierships at three different clubs. Oh, breaking call against Kim Green. That is massive. She cannot believe it, but it's an opportunity for the Firebirds. Firebirds lead this quarter 10 6. Tippett, one on one, Leighton rises high. And there's the splits landing, and that is unstoppable. And we are all tied up with six minutes to go before three-quarter time. Aitken doesn't want to shoot from there. They're being patient. No rush of blood, Leighton. It's off her. Oh, it's a Swiss ball. You can just see when the Firebirds get the ball, they're waiting for Gretel Tippett to get into the circle. But if she's taking the centre pass, it's taking her a long time to get back. They've got to start to share that centre pass around. There's a drop ball from Aitken. Vanish it, obstruction. Vanish centre obstruction. Goal of fear, hold. Goal of fear, fear. Goalkeeper. Yes. Caitlin Thwaites has gone cold in this third quarter list. She had 18 up until half time, just the two goals from two attempts. So she's faded out and got able to get on top. Bring the 
Yeah, Baxter. that's a shot that she would have taken in the first two quarters. She's got to find a way to get herself back in the game. Here she is for a third attempt of the third quarter. And she converts. Five minutes left before three-quarter time. Firebirds threatening, threatening, threatening. Revalian, the high lob. Again, unstoppable, and Aitken should finish. Good delivery then from Revalian. It was quick. She just turned and gave the ball. And in the blink of the night, the ball moves up the other end, and Caitlin Twites throws it down. It's almost goal for goal, it feels like, at the moment. This is when turnovers are, are so vital. On the edge of the circle, Revalian into Tippett. Oh, oh there's those elbows. Now, that's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, and Julie Corletto shakes her head and looks straight at the umpire and says no. Yeah. Not Aiken does that. And you wonder if she's trying to protect herself, but she's got to be so careful. She'll give away penalties and she'll do damage. So I reckon Sharon Kelly, the umpire, would have had a good look at that. Waits with a little bit of space. It's just her oh. second miss, but she's able to get a crucial tip on the offensive rebound. That was a really good chase from Caitlin Thwaites. Dabs it down to Pettit, and what a combination. See, so you can't go doing that. No. Loose ball, Corletto scrambles. Nevin's just a little push over the sideline. Well, you wouldn't know that Corletto's had half of a face oh, rearranged. She's been in everything in the last few minutes. No, She's just so tough. No. That face, would she just be stinging, wouldn't she, at the she, moment? Oh, she would, but adrenaline is an amazing that thing. I reckon she wouldn't feel it. So the Swifts have been gutsy. They're desperately trying to hold on to this vital lead. The just bounce pass into Pettit on the baseline. Smart play then from Kim Green. Just wanted to get the penalty taken as fast as she could. Yeah, this is why she's so vital to the Swifts. Just experience move there from Pettit. Force bully out. And they're back out by four. A little bit of breathing space. Two and a bit minutes left before three-quarter time. Tip it. Layton, Layton! It's a loose ball. Aitken gets there. She's a long way from home. They've got to keep her out there. That arm over the goal attack was obstruction. Obstruction. Yep. That's it. Good chase in from Aitken. Hold time goal defence, blood. Bit of blood on her leg now. Now, crucially, this is an umpire's timeout, so they don't have to make the change. Is that new blood? Yeah. New blood. Yeah. New blood. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Julie Colletto might not be hurting now, but I reckon in about four hours' time. Well, she's she bleeding from the nose, possibly a broken nose, and now she's bleeding from the left knee. This is just desperate. Die for the netball stuff. It is desperate and it's tough. And it's just the epitome of our sport. Yeah, and Kat Cox is on the sideline. She was as tough as they come. When she played Coxie, you played with a broken nose. What was it like? I know, I'm having flashbacks when I saw that happen. Exactly the same sort of thing uh, in a semi-final as well. Sarah Allen sitting next to me just said to me she must be in pain, but she won't be. The painful bit is when it initially happens. She'll be focusing now on just getting out there and playing. And you're right, Julie Coletto is certainly a tough customer. She will not stop going in for those balls, even with her face rearranged, as she's nice, so nicely put at least. <laughs> Oh, I do recall Coxie getting straight to the plastic surgeon within hours of breaking her nose. There's a reason she looks so good. <laughs> so this final is delicately poised. Just two crucial minutes before three-quarter time. 
How psychological is it, Liz, just to take that lead into the last change? Oh, it's massive. And it's massive if you can, if you can finish the last few minutes just on a roll, playing good netball. Thwaites. <sighs> it's sat up there for an anxious moment. So far, no signs of edginess or nerve, nerves from Caitlin Thwaites or Susan Pettit. At the other end, the cool Jamaican has done this so many times before. Three goals in it. Swifts with possession. Paige Hadley in her first grand final. Finding some space in the pocket. Gets it into Pettit. Just no sense of panic from the Swifts. Yeah, they're moving the ball around. They're taking some chances, but they just seem to have that demeanour of, yeah, we're in control, doing what we need to do. This is her favourite spot on the baseline, and that is slick shooting from the Swifts, and they're back out by four. So every time the Firebirds surge, the Swifts have had the answers. Margin was three goals at quarter time. Swifts led it by five at half time. Swifts led it. What will it be at three quarter time? Aiken, can she make it drop and bring it back to three? She does. Time. Shot just so the clock has stopped and it's coming back to Pettit. Now, what will she do? Usually likes to get it off in this situation. It might prove costly. Needs to get the shot away and it counts. It counts for the Swifts. And at this stage of the season, everything counts. And so the New South Wales Swifts came into this final as the underdog and they take a four goal lead into the final change. It's 45 to the Queensland Firebirds. 41. Stick with us for final 15 minutes next. Closer to me, yeah, but fine. that's okay. So you go, and then I can come, come off. off. Okay. Yeah. Well, they've been in this situation for the last two years, and they have failed the Queensland Firebirds. Have they got another level to go to? As Julie Coletto gets a little bit more treatment on that nose that is bleeding, it is three-quarter time, and it is the Swifts. They've led from the very start. And they lead by four. Liz Ellis, these stats. Well, it's amazing shooting percentages from both teams. The Swifts at 92%. We talked about the championship quarter being the third quarter. Susan Pettit, what a champion. 10 from 10 in that third quarter. Caitlin Thwaites went off the boil and, and Pettit really stepped into the breach. Uh, Pettit needs to be a little bit of a concern for the Firebirds. 59, Laura Geitz is the most penalised player on court with 20. Twice as many as her Swifts counterpart, Shani Layton. 15 minutes of their season left and they're sure to give it everything. It'll be a long 15 minutes. Firebirds with possession. We expect more calls from this end, Liz? Yeah, we do. Although, you know, I said it was going to be the scoring end and it hasn't turned out that way. It's been a change for the Swifts. Kath Cox. Sabi McCulloch has been sent to the bench and English international Jade Clark has come onto the court in her position. Okay, Jade Clark, what a moment for her as Green finds Pettit on the baseline. Beautiful stuff, Jade Clark. Played every game so far for the Swifts this year. This is her first grand final though. 
Really interesting call, that one. I thought that uh, Abby McCulloch had Caitlin Nevins pretty well held. Nevins went three goal assists in the first, none in the second, and one in the third. So it's a huge call to make. But Jade Clark is a real ball winner, and that's what her job's going to be. You know, at the other end of the court, the switch to McMenamin on Green. McGreen actually went from three assists in the first to four in the second and seven in the third. So it was like Kim Green had a lot more space in that third quarter. Swiss have only lost three last quarters this year. Guides! Guides stands up. So the penalty's down this end. These are the moments that you want your leaders to stand up in, and Laura Geitz has won the ball back. A little rush of blood on the outlet pass, but they'll be able to take it again. What can they do? Five birds have lost four last quarters for the season. Tippett needs to back herself. Edges closer. So she's drawing the penalty, Liz, and then happy just to offload it to Aitken. Yeah, and look at the smart play. She saw that both the Swift defenders were back on Aiken, so the little one two got it closer to the post. Just when you felt that the Swifts were in control, the Firebirds through a single turnover have come alive. And Aiken, she is the go-to girl, and they're back within one. Noise level has gone up a gear. Waits, using her body, strong on Geitz and then strong on the finish from Caitlin Waits. And that's what the Firebirds have to do, just turn and find Aitken. And even if it falls short, she will usually mop up. In this situation, Romelda Aiken's been there so many times before, Liz, and she just, the face gives nothing away. The poker face, such clarity of mind. It's almost like she's in a state of zen out there. <laughs> what a moment. And it's Swate that comes up with it. Firebirds aren't going to get too many opportunities. They've got to take them all. So magnificent rebound from Caitlin Thwaites. Standing tall under enormous pressure, Caitlin Thwaites. She put the little give. Oh, Clark. And he's just come into the contest. Aitken is their only avenue to goal at the moment, but it's working. Seven in the first quarter, 12 in the second, 13 in the third, Aitken. Green on the edge of the circle. Caitlin Nevins just flexed then. Oh, White's lucky to get away with the big push on Bully. Ooh. But I reckon what Caitlin Quakes has done really well today is taken the body to the Firebirds defenders. You know, in the past she's looked a bit scared of it when she's got it, but today she's given it. And she is putting on a shooting clinic out there at the moment, Caitlin Quakes. 26 from 29. Oh, it's ambitious. But if anyone's going to get it up that high, Romelda Aitken will. Just got the wobbles a little bit on the shot. Doesn't matter. She'll still get the rebound. So the Firebirds need a stop. Who will blink first? Oh, that's got a bit too much on it. Caitlin Thwaites protecting the backspace. Got there and she can't miss Caitlin Thwaites. Well, speaking of Zen at one end, Thwaites is the same. Let's not forget these two sides played in round three. It was the first draw of the year. And with seconds on the clock, Thwaites had the chance to win it and she missed. Now tip it, it's her turn to go, and it falls short, and guess who grabs the rebound? Huge moment for Shani Layton. Goal attack, obstruction. I reckon Paige Hadley's had a really good game today. She's playing against Kim Revalian, who is, I think, the best centre-court player in the world, and she's matched up. She's 
contact. Started off a little slow, Hatley, but she's coming to the game beautifully. Defensive rebound up one end for Leighton, and Thwaites finishes off her good work. And now that lead is three. That is breaking Nolatek. Nolatek holding. And it can turn in an instant, we heard Laura Geitz say, just before half-time. It's just an intercept. And there it is, Laura Geitz. Speaking of which, big moment, big player, and Green flattens her. Public enemy number one, Kim Green. <laughs> and, you know, she's the type of player that loves that, Liz. Yeah, bring it on. I'm not going to worry her. Bring it on. She looks like better. So every possession is just so difficult here. Kim Revalian. Just a quick ball. Compare goalkeeper, where you are. Yeah, I know. And it's back to two. That is causing contact. Oh, hip and shoulder. Kim Green making guides earn it. So they've got possession here, the Firebirds. Tip it. Oh, oh, she fell on the ball. That was a really good little hand in there from Leighton. Just when you feel that the Firebirds can start to build some pressure, it's a little bit of defensive brilliance from the Swifts or a little stutter that just gives the Swifts control back. All these stats, Liz, are going against the Firebirds at the moment. Only one team has scored more than 50 goals against the Firebirds this year. It was the Fever back in round one. And they're aimed defensively into every game. Laura Geitz has said it publicly, is keep the team under 50 goals. They Kate. haven't been able to do it today. Here's another crucial thing. Caitlin Thwaites on 28 goals. Yep. She scores the next one and the Thwaites factor comes into play. Every time Thwaites has got 29, the Swifts have not lost. It all goes out the window on the last day of the season, though, doesn't <laughs> it? You can have stats out your yin yang, Kel, but <laughs> grand finals are a funny thing. Thwaites. Thwaites oh, makes her think about it. That's twice. They've gone for the block shot. That's it. That's a 29 goals from Caitlin Thwaites. Making the ball talk, Kim Green on the edge of the circle, rolling that in to Pettit. Swaites again. Caitlin Thwaites a full short. Great boxing out by Beck Bully, and she was able to claim the rebound. Yeah, it was a beautiful jump from Bully, just got a fingertip to the ball. This is really the big play for the Firebirds. Six minutes to go, three goals down, they've got a score here. Bart is moving off centre. Bart is obstruction. Bring the fans contact outside. Yes. Tip it. Causing contact. Yes. Does she need to even look at the post or try and fake at least? Because Gretel Tippett's getting that ball in that circle. And her first thought every time is just get it to Aitken. No, I don't okay, think she needs outside. to fake. Aitken doesn't need that much space to get the ball. She's not even pretending she's going to shoot. Here they come. So the tension is unbearable. It's come down to the final five minutes of the season. Can the New South Wales Swifts hold their nerve? They have led from the very first opening centre pass. The Firebirds have not hit the front. But they've won their last 12 and Pettit with a steady up. Oh, who'd be a coach? I can strong. Oh, that's a throw into the Swifts. That's the little win that Shani Layton has been aiming for. This is a game of centimetres, it's a game of millimetres, and Shani Leighton has just proved that. Well, as a player, you have to make something happen. And Shani Leighton has just made something happen for the sweeps. 
Just watch this. It was a little tip. It was the second effort. And Aitken didn't get a fingertips out of the way quick enough. The little moments that win grand finals, Kel. Hit it for the Swifts. And they continue to stand up under pressure. Four minutes left. They lead it by three. Susan Pettit, 25 from 27 in a grand final. You would have to select her in the Australian team for the World Cup. Surely she's done enough. Gives it off to Thwaites. Caitlin Thwaites for the Swifts. They're edging closer. Rob Wright can barely watch this. It's a four goal margin. Clark throws everything at it. Lucky let off here for the Queensland Firebirds. How much time, Liz, do you need to make up three goals? Not long when you've got a shooter like Romelda Aiken that you can give it too long. The Firebirds simply need a turnover and the Swifts aren't in the mood for giving it. Oh, Kim Green screaming at Paige Hadley, give it to Pettit. And she does just that. And Pettit, cool under pressure. It is an absolute pressure cooker. Obstruction goal attack. And the Swifts are on the verge of causing the biggest upset that we have ever seen in the eight grand finals of the ANZ champs. The Magic caused an upset against the Vixens years ago in Melbourne. But this would be a bigger result. Two and a half minutes on the clock. Three goals in it. Happy to share it around. You want it in the hands of your most experienced player. That's yeah, Kim Green. You do, but the Swifts can't go into their shelves. They've got to keep pushing through and do what they've done. And here's the opening. She's out of court, Kim Green. Laura Geitz will take the ball. This is crucial, this play for the Firebirds. That is outside shooter. That is contact. What an absolute cliffhanger. Edge of your seat stuff. It is a pulsating final late and late throws everything at it. And Aiken. The cool Jamaican. What a delivery from Bully. Offside when defends free pass inside. Tippett will give it off. Aiken. That is textbook. Textbook from the Firebirds, and they've got six and a half thousand fans willing them. Riding every pass here at the moment. The pressure is all on the Swifts. Surely they can't lose it from here. The Firebirds are yet to hit the front. Pressure not just on the players, there's pressure on the umpires. Tension in the air. Pettit to Thwaites. Who wants it more? Oh, oh that's right in the line. That's massive. The Firebirds are making a real stand here late. Is time against them. They move it through the centre corridor. Oh. Everyone's up on their feet. Okay. And it has hurt. hurt. Oh, God, she's grabbed at her ribs. Paige Hadley is down. She is hurt. Injury. This game has everything. The Firebirds bring the ball down court. Oh, it was a knee from Nevins. Oh. Let's hope, Liz, that she is just badly winded. A fearless attack on the ball, Paige Hadley. 51 seconds, Liz Ellis, and the Swifts lead it by one. If this is extraordinary. We knew we'd get the best two teams. This is the eighth ANZ Championship Grand Final that I've called Kelly, and it is the best. High drama. This is unbelievable. Thought that the Swifts just went into themselves a little bit in the last minute or so, and the Firebirds sensed it. And suddenly time stands still for Rosalie Jenke. The shortest day of the year today, this last minute is going to seem like the longest minute for both of these teams. Thanks,
Hadley is still down receiving treatment. It's had everything this match. Has not gone to plan at all. No one predicted this. Playing in her first ANZ Championship Grand Final, Paige Hadley. A 22 year old, a couple of games for Australia. She wants to stay out there. Just sucking in the air. Well, as it stands now, okay, the New South Wales right. Swifts have got one hand on the ANZ Championship trophy. They do, and they've had to make changes already. Well, last minute of the game, Jay Clark is on at centre, Abby McCulloch is on at wing defence. Firebirds into attack to level it all up. Gretel Tippett doesn't want to go to the post. Instead to Aitken. Don't tell me we're heading into extra time. It's a Firebird centre pass. The Swifts are now the team under pressure. They need to stop. 30 seconds on the clock. You wouldn't read about this. The Queensland Firebirds. Tippett doesn't want to take the shot. She's going to have to. They're eating into it. Gretel Tippett. They hit the front for the very first time with 14 seconds left on the clock. And Laura Guides, the superstar of Australian netball. The Queensland Firebirds are going to hold on and they've claimed it. Can you believe it? Pure euphoria at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. It's highway robbery. They've stolen it. They've pitched it in the dying seconds. And it sparked wild celebrations for the Queensland Firebirds. Two years of grand final heartbreak. They left it to the last second to conquer their demons. Triumphant at last. And Liz Ellis, that was worth three years oh, waiting for that. That was unbelievable. The Firebirds have stolen that grand final trophy. They try it all match. Unbelievable to see Ramelda Aiken, the Jamaicans, shouting Queenslander at the end of the game. They didn't give up hope. They kept believing in themselves and they ran it to the final seconds. And they just found something within. They were able to rise to the occasion. And that injury to Paige, Had Paige Hadley in that final minute, it just came back to hurt the Swifts. Oh, it did. And the Swifts are shattered. Oh, and how brave and how gutsy and how devastating for the New South Wales Swifts. You know, the Swifts owned 58 and a half minutes of that grand final, but you have to play 60. The Swifts won the first half, 30 goals to 25, and the Firebirds won the second half, 32 to 26. And how good is live sport? I mean, it's oh. unscripted drama at its very best. Liz, you couldn't have written a better storyline than what we have just seen here today. You can't tell me that any sporting event in the world could rival that. That was unbelievable. Straight away, Rob Wright calls them in. Firebirds have saved some pride for the state of Queensland. So 13 in a row for the Queensland Firebirds. It's been a complete season for them. Only one loss. It was all the way back in round one, 112 days ago. Oh, goodness me. They made us wait till the very last second. Well, you've got to feel for the Swifts. They did so much. <laughs> Ramona Aiken, she owns this crowd. Jumping for joy, Ramelda Aiken. What about the crowd, Liz? What about the atmosphere as well? Oh, unbelievable. You know, this game sold out in about an hour and a half. And within 30 minutes, you couldn't get two tickets next to each other. And if you thought Laura Geitz wasn't adored enough in this city, the Golden Girl is standing by with Sarah Allen. Laura Geitz, you just stole that premiership from the New South Wales Swifts. Were you confident you were going to win it? Oh, I don't know what that last quarter of Neville. I've never played a quarter like that. There were so many emotions. And I think in that last three or four minutes, we just we just knew that we, 
we were going to win this and we hadn't gone through the season we had and we haven't gone through two grand finals in Commonwealth Bridesmaids without just finding our absolute guts out and um, and that's what we did and holy dooly I couldn't be more prouder that is just I mean that's just that is amazing that is amazing that is the best feeling that I've ever had on a netball court is to be New South Wales by one goal the reaction after the game this one meant more than the one in 2011 didn't it oh absolutely yeah I mean obviously the last two years coming so close and not putting out our best performance in the grand final that looks like it was going that way today but this playing group just has a belief like no other that they can win under the toughest circumstances and it doesn't get any tougher than that and to be honest Swifts they were just an incredible side today we know that they're an, a side that plays incredible netball and it was just I, I suppose um, those last two years and, and everything that we've been through as a playing group together in those tough moments counted today and as I said I just couldn't be prouder of such a wonderful group of girls and individual girls that have gone through some real challenges at times and netball's been their family and they've come back and had another crack at it and what a beautiful way for them to be rewarded. 2015 champions, go and celebrate. Oh, thanks, Sashi. Thank you. Over to you, Catherine Cox, with the other star down the other end. Well, Ramelda Aiken, third time lucky. How are you feeling right now? Oh, so pumped, so excited. I'm so proud of the girls. I mean, we had to fight it out to the end. You know, credits to, to Swift. They, they came at us at the from the very first whistle and they didn't hold up. So, oh my God, this is just great. And you are clearly the go-to girl in that goal circle. Wouldn't you know it, Gretel Tippett comes and steals your thunder. How's your combination been with her this year? Um, look, not going to lie, we didn't have the best of start for the season. And, you know, we just trust the process. And Rose has said we just have to keep going at it. Just doing the simple things and the one percenters gets us over the line. There's been a bit of talk about your courageous captain, Laura Geitz, calling it quits at the end of this year. Tell us a bit about what she brings to your Firebirds lineup. Oh, God. So much love, so much support. She gives us confidence whenever we're, we had games like these and we didn't know where the energy was going to come from. Somehow she finds the words to, to help us to get over the line and she's a, she's a true inspirational to all of us and not just for the team but myself personally. Like she's been, she's been, she's just amazing. <laughs> well, congratulations. Go and enjoy. Thanks Thank you very much. And Sarah Allen is with Shani Layton. A really disappointed Shani Layton. Shani, with 40 seconds to go, we thought it was yours. How disappointing is it to lose like that? Uh, yeah, it sucks. Um, I'm lost for words. Like, you know, we fought so hard and I'm so proud of all the girls. Um, but yeah, it sucks. You must be really proud of the journey, though. It was a really gallant effort. You did it the hard way. Yeah, look, I'm so proud of the girls. They just, you know, they put their everything out there today. And, you know, a lot of people after round five didn't even think we were going to make it this far. So we did. I didn't get the result that we wanted. But also, like, we had some incredible fans here today. And sometimes, like, the Swifts fans were louder than the Firebirds, and they were definitely outnumbered. So, look, we're so grateful to have gotten here. And it was just such a great journey this year for the Swifts. In the off-season, Rob was really brave. He recruited a whole heap of new girls into the team and it didn't work straight away, but you've gelled together nicely in the second half. So next year can only get better, you'd think. Surely. <laughs> Surely. We'll have a better start next year, that's for sure. Commiserations, Shani. Thanks yeah, for joining thanks, us. Thanks, guys. And congratulations to the Firebirds girls as well. They were more consistent all year and uh, they did a great job today. So congrats, girls. Great sportsmanship from Shani Layton. There's no other way to put it. The Queensland Firebirds have pinched it from the Swift's hands. What a climax. Laura Guyatt said it beautifully. Hooli dooly. We'll be back after this with the match presentation. And to wrap it all up, Gretel Tippett. Who would have thought the hero, the sealer in the final seconds, her one and only goal in that last quarter.